Um, hi, I'm Jessica Norman, and um, these are the lyrics for my song, Pura uh, Vida. Um, it goes like this. You precious baby, you poor little girl, they tell you you're crazy, but they still want your work. You try to be honest, you try to be kind, try not to feel worthless or be out of your mind. Five days still sober, but then who's keeping you in? Can you be drink till it's over or enjoy your own mind? Well, what makes you happy and why do you look so sad? Don't you got all that you need and is it truly that bad? Could you just imagine how bad it would be if I was the worst of you, if you were the worst of me? What's in the bottle? What do you got in the bag? And then it fades out that way. Um, honestly, it's usually uh, intense uh, emotional strife. <laughs> Usually something is going on and I need to process it, whether it's um, within my interpersonal relationships, um, within my own self, um, something is going on in the world that I'm trying to make sense of or trying to cope with. Um, usually it's, I'm trying to have a conversation with an entity that I otherwise uh, would not be able to have the conversation with. Um, so, Pura Vida, uh, I wrote during a time that I was in a, 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 the beginning of a big transition and uh, I was drinking a lot and um, actually alcohol, uh, alcoholism runs in, in, in various forms of my family and so some of my family members have more of a difficulty with um, they have a more difficult time managing their relationship with alcohol than others. Um, and at the time, I was I was really exploring what a difficult relationship with alcohol might be, and um, not not out of really fun, but it, at the time it, it seemed like a mental or emotional necessity. And um, I think I was I was comparing uh, myself to uh, some people that I've met in the past that had more of an issue with alcohol than I was currently having at the time, and I was imagining how does a person handle that so gracefully, and I felt, you know, that I was just letting everything go, kind of, kind of, kind of letting go of a lot of things, um, and, and, and not the free my I, um, I also, you know, whenever we're going through hard times, I think we can feel guilty uh, if we know that it can be worse. And, and sometimes, you know, that stoic way of thinking about things can be very helpful. You know, you have a roof over your head, at least you have food today, you know, you have your health, whatever it is. Every now and then, uh, saying that when you're in that moment of strife is not, is not as helpful as you think it would be. Good. And so that was. The song is kind of me going back and forth between um, feeling um, very poor and dramatic and just not able to pull myself up. And then the other part of me that was like, really? Is this what you're going to be? Is this how you're going to go down? Is this it? You've got to get it together. <laughs> that, that's about what was going on there. So that's um, a good question because I actually started to write lyrics um, a, a few months before the song um, came. The song I I think at the very beginning I started to write the words "You Precious Baby" um, because I was thinking about how you placate yourself and placate others, just try to soothe them, but how Certain words, um, you know, they actually have a knife instead of, of a song.
stop the gunpowder casing, depending on who you're saying it to and what the situation is. But um, my process, I honestly had uh, sat down and it took like, time to hold the script to come out after these first couple of lyrics. Uh, uh, not lyrics at the time, they were just lines that kept kind of running through my head. And sometimes it, it works that way. When I sit down, it all comes out. And this was one of those songs. Yeah, that's a good question, too, because when I wrote the first couple of lines, I think I wrote it down and then I didn't come back to it for seven months. And then I was flipping through this notebook that I have, little words or, or ideas, maybe names for songs or concepts, and I saw it when I started scribbling. And that process of scribbling was about 30 minutes to an hour. Um, but the song didn't really become a song until uh, about a year or so later when I went through the book again and I picked it up and for the first time I started to strum my guitar among these words and melody came out and it's possible that after that year um, I, I might have slightly changed one or two lyrics or I might have added I think some of the blues and the that you can hear but I would say altogether um, it would be a couple of years um, but, the, but the main bulk of the writing happens probably within 30 minutes to an hour yeah that's um, so it depends on if I'm working on my own, but um, it also depends on uh, what instrument I'm working with because I, I also play piano. And sometimes I will have the lyrics first and um, I'll start to play the instrument along with the lyrics. Um, and, and my voice will sort of find the melody that I was wanting to have. And during those times, once the instrument meets the lyrics, that's when I find, oh, actually, I need this line to get a little longer um, because I want it to be a little certain way. Or actually, I need this line to be cut short a little bit. I need to change this word because suddenly when I've added this instrument in my voice, the mood is, is turning into this direction and I want to help it go that way a little bit sharper. Um, honestly, Revision is a funny thing for me because I used to think that I was a failure if I needed to revise the song too many times after I had originally ended. But um, now I, I think revision is something that you do as a tool to enhance how you feel about what you're making. If you wanted your song to um, be very melancholy and, and, and as you start singing the song, you start playing an instrument with your song, you realize you suddenly have another mood for this line or even this entire verse. I've completely deleted entire verses or switched around the entire rate of the song because once I started playing an instrument and singing to it, it became something else. And I think the most important part about my revision process now is it's just accepting and allowing the song to not be completed until until I feel good about it. And, and that's not to say to be a perfectionist, but to want to say um, that the song has kind of had a chance to become what it's going to be. Yeah, so this is, for me, like I said before about what when I'm usually writing it's because I kind of need to work something out most times. It's because I need to say something to myself or to perhaps a family member or someone that I'll never see again. Um, a lot of times it's a much more catharsis. So I know that we can't always write when we're emotionally distraught. Sometimes we're incapable of writing. But the first thing I would say is if you're upset, if you're happy, if you're bored, write. If you're thinking about it, 
just just get into the habit. That's the first thing. Because what happens is sometimes we have good ideas in our mind and we think, oh, I'll remember it. And you don't write it down and you forget it. And you don't have to finish that thing that you start working on. You never know. Like if you're a visa, you might come back and it might become something that you never imagined it would be. And just get into the habit of writing stuff down. That would be my biggest first tip. And the other thing, the other big tip is, you know, your songs don't have to be for anybody else. And when I say that, I mean, when you write, when you first start letting yourself write, you start listening to music, right? You're creating your voice, you're developing who you are as an artist, a lyricist, or whatever. Someone out there, and I don't just mean one random person and no one out there, someone, there are going to be people out there that you speak to, your experience speaks to, no matter how specific you write your lyrics. I used to think you wanted your lyrics to be as general as possible. And general lyrics are great, but people want to feel what you feel, and they want to feel like they are not alone most of the time. So my two biggest tips would be just get in the habit. If you think not, that kind of stuff catch you, write it down. If you're not a writing down person, put a voice. I can't tell you how many times old voice became songs for me or for me um, that I gave them to later on. And, you know, write for you. Write for you first. <laughs> not immediate, immediate family or your friends, but just trust me. <laughs> I would like to mention uh, a, a specific song and then a, a different specific artist, if that's okay. The song is this song is called Futuristic Casket by um, a, a duo, Fantagram. And the reason uh, I think these lyrics are so great is because they are very simple. It's not too, too complex, but there's a lot of room for interpretation. You can kind of put your idea about what they're talking about. Um, they didn't write, you know, a prolifically long set of lyrics, which is also impressive, but it's not always necessary. But it always strikes me um, the it, it's the punch. It, it feels like I'm getting hit over the head um, every time towards the end of the song, and, and it's just repeating this phrase, and, and they slightly change um, some of the lyrics at the end, and it just really um, it knocks it out of me every time. Um, I can't get enough of it, um, but the the lyrics uh, that always take me back, uh, take me, take me off my feet. It's, um, I saw your face in a past life. Um, I'm ready to move on in a futuristic casket. Um, I saw your face in a film tonight. I wanted to touch the screen. I'll never be free again. And even now, I, I can't express to you exactly why, but I, I mean. My, you know, my throat gets kind of tight and I get chills every time. So I just, I just think that it's powerful lyrics and it's, it's very specific to whatever they're feeling. But I, and I still can't exactly imagine what they were trying to get across, but I feel it, you know. And then the, the artist, her artist, Regina Spector, she is the one who kind of um, influenced me to go, you know what, if I could talk about this very specific red bench with a grassy nail underneath that I stepped, I stepped on and I, I, got, I almost got tetanus, you know, one time, and, and, you know, create an entire realm of, in this song about this one experience, then I can't. She's so amazing with this. It, 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 it's not ever, it's never, I never think, oh, well, I'll never experience exactly what she's talking about because I want to relate. I'm reaching out. And it's so wonderful to have such a vivid experience with her um, that she shared. And I think that's a good example of 
maybe your lyrics for you and your experience because someone is always going to know what's next. Okay, so actually, I've been working on an EP um, for the past uh, couple of months. I, I have been very um, secretive with my work. I, in the past, I've only um, really played music at live shows or maybe a night night. Um, I shared little pieces here and there, and I have broken up pieces in different parts of the internet. Um, but the CP was going to be, or is going to be, my way of saying, okay, here you go, this is what I've been working on. It's all, here's some stuff, here you go, you can listen to it, you can judge it, you can like it, you can not like it, you can forget about it, you can remember it. Um, and that's coming out soon. I don't, I don't have an exact date for it, but um, whenever it is, I'm 